this is Teresa and today I'd like to talk a little bit about resist techniques. I get asked quite often and with my stamping projects how have you done various techniques and there's lots of different ways of doing a resist. Today I'm just going to show three or four of the simplest ones that I can think of to share with you today. Um, we're going to do a couple of resists on a white base and then colour over the top and I'm going to do a couple that require a coloured base to start with and then we'll go over with a black ink and let the coloured show through. Um, on, first of all we're going to go with the simplest thing, um, a wax candle. Uh, maybe when you were a child you might have done something drawing um, with wax and then painted over the top and it really is as simple as that. Here we're going to draw some little circles in the background. And then we're going to use a water-based ink. In this case, I'm going to use a distress ink to go over the top and the wax axis of resist and allows the white design to show through. It really is as simple as that. Brilliant idea for a background for a journal page, tags, ATCs, cards, you name it. Really quick and easy one to do there. Next up, we're going to uh, use some matte medium. Now this is a clear liquid, a bit like a Mod Podge. It can be used as a glue, as a sealant. And the fact that it is a sealant means that it's ideal for creating a barrier so that your ink doesn't come through. So I'm going to use, uh, use it through a stencil. This is a really nice design from Joggles and it's called Global Number no. One. It's going to be a good one to use because it's quite a big design. It should be fairly easy for me to apply the matte medium. Don't want too much because obviously it is a liquid and we don't want it to ooze underneath the stencil if possible. But Nothing has to be perfect, so don't worry if it does, uh, if you do make a little bit of a mess. If you're not confident about holding your stencil in place, you could put it down with a bit of tape, masking tape, painter's tape, just holding it steady over the tag. Make sure you've done as much of the design as you want to. Take the stencil off. Don't forget to wash your stencil and your brush. Just let this dry. It shouldn't take too long. Let's give it a bit of a blast with the heat gun. Looks to be about dry now. Could use distress inks again. This time I'm going to just use a spray. Taking one of my Dilutions ink sprays. As you can see, the matte medium is acting as a resist. Let's just wipe off the excess there. A great effect is that. Again, perfect for journal pages, ATC backgrounds, card making. Really good. I like that effect a lot. Next I'm going to do a technique on one of our pre-coloured tags. I've coloured this with Distress Ink. Um, 
is mustard seed carved pumpkin and candied apple. And I'm going to use some clear embossing powder held in place with this mark ink. And once again, we, you could stamp an image. I'm going to use a stencil. Another excuse to use one of these lovely stencils from Joggles. This one's called Punchinella Trio. Three different designs on it. And I'm going to go for the dotted design. I like that one. So just applying my ink through the stencil. Don't particularly want to cover the entire tag this time. Move that out of the way. Sprinkling on clear embossing powder, which is running out. You can see there. Let's just put that away. Get the heat tool out and melt that. there you can see the pattern embossed on there with the clear embossing powder so now I'm going to take some black soot distress ink and go over the top the embossing powder acts as a resist so while the rest of the tag is now going black we get to see the colours that were originally there underneath. Another really great technique there. Just take a damp cloth or a baby wipe lightly get off any ink that may be sitting on top of that embossing powder. Really easy technique to be done with any stamps that you may have, any stencils. Really cool. Just clear the workspace. Another thing that can be done with embossing powder, you can use white embossing powder. In this instance, it doesn't make a lot of difference. My tag is white, so the effect would be similar with a clear. You could, again, either stamp or use a stencil. Apply your Bursa Mark ink and your embossing powder. Now heat it up to melt it. to cool down and again you could use uh, your sprays I'm going to use ink which color shall we choose this time let's have the mermaid lagoon I like that one this works really well with watercolor paints brushes, anything like that. Embossing powder resists. You get a really nice negative image. A 
again just wipe over lightly with a damp cloth or a baby wipe just to buff off any ink that might be resting on top of the embossing powder and again brilliant idea for a background the last technique I'm going to do today is on our other coloured tag and I'm going to use the Distress Micro Glaze. This is really to sort of stop Distress inks from reacting with water, which we all know they're very water reactive. So it should work as a resist for a, for a spray ink afterwards. So we'll see what happens with it. Um, I've got my other tag here that I've coloured with uh, Twisted Citron, Lucky Clover and Mermaid Lagoon Distress inks. And I'm going to stamp a design on here before I put the Distress Glaze. Um, I'm going to use this nice uh, stamp that Joggles kindly sent me, Doodle Flower number one. It's a really nice uh, open design. And I'm going to use some archival ink, just in case um, any of the spray that I use afterwards uh, gets through the glaze. Archival's waterproof, so I know that at least this isn't going to smudge. So let's just randomly stamp this onto the tag. Let's pop that away. Just wipe that up. So the Distress Glaze is like a paraffin wax uh, almost. I'm just going to apply that with my finger over the area that I've stamped because that's what, what I want to protect, that's where I want the resist to be. And I'm going to apply it fairly thickly. No idea really what's going to happen with this. It's worth knowing if you've got some of this, let's find another way of using it. The instructions for the, the micro glaze tell you to use a dry paper towel to buff off the excess once you've applied it to the areas. In this instance, I'm not going to buff the excess off because I'm applying a fair amount of spray ink on top. I want to make sure that there's as much of this in place as possible to act as the resist. You can always buff some excess off afterwards. So I think we've covered our three flowers there. Let's just have a look so you can see the light catching where that is. Some paper down. Let's take my Dilusions black marble spray. And as you can see, that wax has stopped the ink from soaking into the card. All that's happened is it just beaded up on top of it. Let's move that out of the way. Let's get a clean piece of paper towel and buff off the excess of that wax glaze now. I really like that. Great effect and so yeah. Distress Micro Glaze, apply it quite generously and it does work as a really good resist.